Welcome back, everybody, to the Virginia Beach Neptunes franchise. It's year nine, and we are entering the second half of the season. Coming off, winning 14 of our last 20 games, a very impressive part two of the season. But entering the third quadrant, only four games separate the one and eight seeds in this Eastern Conference. It is tight across the entire conference. It's going to be a really interesting um second half of the year given how close things are but luckily we are going to end the year with well we're going to end the year with a lot of uh road games which we are better on the road so far than at home but i'm not sure how accurate that is right now because we do have a big chunk of home games right out of the all-star break only one road game in the entire uh month after the all-star break so that could be a big month for us later down the line but we're about a month out from the trade deadline. And like somebody mentioned in the comments last episode, I think instead of targeting a shooter at the, the uh, deadline, if we do end up making a move, I'm probably going to more so target a better two guard that is more of an athletic specimen that can play some defense, that can go up and get the ball at the rim for some lob attempts and some dunks that can really give us a boost on fast breaks and things like that. So, I mean, Josh Green kind of fits that mold, but not exactly. But we aren't the only team that is eyeing a move approaching the trade deadline. One move I potentially see the Rockets making is going after a better power forward. Because right now, they've been starting Santi Aldama for, for most of their season. They do have Matt Tinsley, a rookie power forward that we thought about drafting. But those are their best power forwards. And if they get one better guy in their lineup they're probably going to be one of the best western conference teams they are getting an, an mvp level caliber season from glenn carroll so they're probably going to look to add a piece to fix that and i do see as i talked about last episode i do see portland probably moving on from scoot henderson who has been here since the start of his career but they've never really been in contention whatsoever in the western conference so it's probably time those guys to kind of reset and look towards the draft and kind of think about a rebuild there but for us we're going to sim the next four games two away two at home and then i kind of want to see what happens here in this grizzlies game because they have been shockingly the best team in the conference despite really only having two you know good players i, I guess three good players on their team with a couple of role players trying to fill in and the role players have stepped up better than I thought, so could be a fun game to watch. They got a aging Jamal Murray on their bench. And the Celtics are also a top Eastern Conference team. They signed Trey Young in the offseason. They also signed Carlton Posey. They traded for Derek Lively from the Spurs. And here they are, third in the conference and second in the power rankings, too. So a couple of big games right there. The Nets are solid, but we're probably going to skim over that game. So let's see, how do we do in this next four game stretch coming off of a blowout win against Memphis, which closed out last episode. And we actually get Josh Green back before simming. So I'm actually gonna adjust our lineup real quick and bring him back in. A couple guys are still dealing with some fatigue. So this will help us out hopefully in that regard. But might wanna take a few more minutes away from Jovanovic until he uh, is back to full stamina. So we'll give Wilson Towns maybe um, a few extra minutes, like two extra minutes in the third. So Jovanovic down at to a 26 points per game for now. And for Josh Green, I think we can start to give a few of those Quinn Hilliard minutes. And Agbaji is also still kind of tired, which is still kind of confusing to me. So I think what I'll do as I'll play Josh Green and the two spots here, and then play him a little bit in the three spots with Wendell Moore coming off the courts. And then we'll give these minutes to Josh Green, and we'll give these ones from Hilliard and the start of the fourth quarter as well. So Green will get about, well, that was the wrong person. Green will get around 12 minutes, we're gonna bump more down to 13 and Hillier down to 19 points just to kind of spread these minutes around. 
Ilan Duran picks up a knock after a win against the Wizards, but should be able to play through it. It's only a day-to-day -day injury, so he'll be fine after maybe one or two more games. We just got completely bodied by Minnesota, and that will tumble into a two-game losing streak coming out of a loss against the Thunder. We're trying to battle back after kind of an unexpectedly slow start in their first half of the season. Only 22 for Boyd, 20 for Jovanovic. 4 for 10 from the field for Hilliard, 3 for 9 for Towns, and Kaminga, 1 for 6, only 4 points here in this one, and uh, unexpected down day for him, and now we got the Grizzlies game. I think for this game, I want to sim the first half and then jump in in the second half and see where things are at, regardless of the score. If it's a blowout, I'll still hop in for a little bit and see what happens, and it looks like we got a pretty good battle going back and forth. And at halftime, the Grizzlies are holding on to a two-point lead, but let's dive in and see what happens the rest of the way. So one characteristic of past years is that we typically, at least in the start of seasons, typically have a pretty big run, like a win streak. Has not really happened this year. We're still trying to find our true rhythm on both ends to really put together one of those win streaks. But right now, the Grizzlies lead by five after that John Morant three. Here's our first possession of the second half. Wendell Moore for three. It's on line. I'm curious why he is starting this third quarter. That must mean that... We took out Ochai Agbaji, so he's either fouled out or injured in this game. John Morant right to the rack. Four-point lead for the Grizzlies. 19. Nice flare play in the corner. Boyd's got a good look at a three, and it's in there. One-point game. On the low block, Morant gets the feed, but can't lay it in. Jovanovic there for the shot contest. Now Boyd gets it inside, but he lost it, and Rodgers picks up a steal. Morant brings it up over Jovanovic. This time it's good. Hot start to this third quarter for him. He's already got six points. Jovanovic pulls up top of the key, but can't connect, and Mitchell Robinson pulls down the rebounds. Haven't seen Tatum touch the ball at all so far. It's been the John Morant show. That shot's off the mark. Boyd brings it up, going right to the rim, and Tatum is called for the foul. An inch away from getting that bucket to drop. We got free throws for a top five MVP vote getter right now against Glenn Carroll, who I believe still leads it. Went Binyama in seconds. And then both John Morant and Tatum were fourth and fifth, so a lot of star power in this game. Shot clock under five. Tatum's going to fire off the screen. Boyd's right there to contest it, but apparently it doesn't matter. Nice cut by Jalen Durant. He rocks the rim off the pass from Mac Boyd. Our 17th assist, and we keep going up from fourth to third in the NBA passing-wise. We don't usually pass it this well, but um, this year's a bit different. I'm all here for it. Deep three for Tatum. It rattles out. They have not taken the lead back, but another chance right here. Kaminga leaves it for Wendell Moore behind the arc. No good, and Robinson pulls it down. Nice play for Tatum. Fading away. No good. Top of the key. We find something this time. Wendell Moore has it jarred loose, but he gets it back. He's lost his dribble. Jovanovic goes up, but misses the flip. Nice spin move by Tatum. He lost his dribble, and John Morant picks up the foul plus the buckets. Jovanovic not happy with the call. Glenn Carroll, by the way, third in front court voting in the Western Conference. Four-point game. We're right in it, but just haven't made enough plays to put us in front, but we're still sticking around. 
Here we go. More isolation for John Moran. Going right at Jovanovic, but again missing out the rim. Surprised he's missed two shots already down there. The floater will put us in front. Jovanovic with a levitation. That is not our first lead of the game, but it is our first lead this half. Now a little pick and roll. Robinson is wide open at the rim. Only eight. Averages like, I think, three or four points per game, but in the pick and roll, I mean, some of those buckets come easy. See, so Andrews with a left handed shot. That one's not easy over Rodgers, but showing off what he can do on the offensive end. Need more of that down the stretch of this season. The high ball screen. Rodgers gets the play now, but Andrews with another good shot contest and. We have a chance to increase our lead. The spin and the miss layup. Jovanovic almost got it to go. He's three for seven from the field. Six points, five assists. The pick and roll again with Rodgers. And this time he's got the hoop and the harm. They've gone to that play three straight times. The free throw is no good. It's a one point Grizzlies lead. Mid range jumper. No, it's a pass instead. Great one out of a shot. Up and over. Durin, the layup's in there. He was trying to draw the charge. 23 for John ja Morant. Been very aggressive here in this third quarter. I want to think about a matchup switch. We're going to wait a little bit longer. We're still in this game easily. Long two for Hilliard off the screen. Front rim and outs. Morant lobs it for Rodgers behind the defense. Yeah, it's still readily apparent that this defense right now is not playing at a high level. The offense is, but we have not gotten hardly any stops on John Morant besides a couple of lucky misses at the rim. And that one's stripped by Hilliard. Robinson gets it back. That's so unlucky. That should have been a stop for us. We've shot better at 50%, but they lead by five. Towns backing down John Morant. He pump fakes. Robinson's hanging around, and we almost turn the ball over. Well, stay with us. 11 on the clock. Off the screen from Berea. Wendell Moore with a nice pump fake, but he's waiting too long to go up with it. And he misses it. Left it short. On the other end, a quick three. John ja Morant nails it. 15 points here in the quarter. We got to make a change now. In the box score, I got to figure out where is Agbaji? He's either hurt or he fouled out. And... He only played two minutes, so he must be hurt. That means we're going to have to put probably Wendell Moore, who's going to take his place, I guess. We're going to have to put Wendell Moore on John Morant and see if that will help us out. But I don't think he's in the game right now, so I think we'll see what Wilson Towns can do for now. But I'm not sure how good of a match that's going to be. But we're going to jump back in. Down by eight. Oh, Moore actually is in the game. Oh, well. The three balls offline from Hilliard. He's not been too great on those in watch games. Only two for eight here in this one. Need the role players to step up. And give us a chance. Tatum. Nails the trifecta. And they're making a run here to close this quarter. Defense is uh, not up to snuff right now. Timeout Neptunes. Wow for Hilliard. He lays it in. Great feed by Wilson Towns over the top. Rodgers the screen. Tatum into a shot off the window. We literally jarred the ball loose and then he gets an open shot because of it. How is that even fair? 11 point game. Good luck for Hilliard. But he still can't connect from downtown. Come on, man. 
37 rebounds for the Grizzlies. That one is stripped off John Moran to save a bucket. Gotta knock a shot down here. Towns going right to the rim, and he's got the bucket on Mercer plus the foul. All right. Wilson Towns making a nice play here. They give us a spark, but the free throw doesn't drop in. Those always matter. Corner three for Mercer. He connects. These guys can't miss right now. This is crazy. Take and roll. Barea wide open at the rim. Easy assist for Boyd. Nice cut. Tatum swatted away by Mac Boyd. A chance to make it single digits. Some good passing, but Robinson picks up. Boy, that's not going to be an easy shot. Get a pass out of that one. Morant. Pass deflected and stolen. Wilson Townsley deflection. And Boyd the steal. Went right back to that pick and roll. Barea has to sky for it. And he scores on the mismatch. Another top of the key three. They love that play, but it's not going to work this time. Got a mismatch with John Rat on Boyd. He gets around him and gets right to the rack for the jam. It's back to six. Last play of the third quarter. Pick and pop. Tatum keeps it. It's over. Boyd, no good. 92-86 with 12 to play. Got a close one right here on the road. They got Jamal Murray in the game to open this fourth quarter. And we start with a steal thanks to our rookie center, Cecil Andrews. We score on the other end. We're going to have a chance. Free throws coming up for Wilson Towns. Two for seven from the field in this game. And now 0 for 2 from what we've seen here at the line. I don't know what it'll take to get him to improve here. He splits these ones. Mercer takes the screen, picks up his dribble. Robinson gives it back. And that's an open look. Screen comes up. Towns lets it fly and sinks the triple. Or no, it's a long two. Damn it. Edwards lost it on the baseline. Poked up by Towns, stolen by Berea. Creating a lot of turnovers here in this half, but we turn the ball over, and that's our eighth so far in this game. We've done a good job overall, but we really just gave it right back after blocking that out of bounds because Kamiga couldn't stay in bounds. That's so unlucky. Done it a couple of times. Out of the corner. Murray shovels it back to Houston. The corner three is out. On the other end, Josh Green attacks the basket, bucket and foul. The first on Murray, and a free throw will put it back to a one-score game. It already is a one-score game, but Green makes it two. Meeks comes in for the Grizzlies, but both stars on the bench right now have got to take advantage with these role players in this game. Murray shovels it back. Edwards, contested three ball, offline. Good kick out, Kaminga has a straightaway. Look, and he connects to put us in front. 95-94, exactly how you want to start a fourth quarter. Braves the screen, Murray the shot, but he can't respond. He got John Morant at the scores table. Josh, screen up ahead, great pass by Wilson Towns, and the run continues. The 
Grizzlies bring in John Morant, re bring in Mac Boyd, and Wilson Towns creates a turnover after the timeout. Right to the rack on the other end, using the window to push our lead to five. Really impressed by Wilson Towns' defense in this game so far. He's already caused at least three turnovers. And is playing pretty well on offense as John Morant just puts the rookie on a poster. Oh, man. What was that? I just gave Towns his flowers and then he immediately turns it over. Luckily, Edwards can't connect on the other end and we get it back. Leading by three. Boy trying to get open off ball. Azir Little's there to contest it and the shot's out. Good pass. Mercer, clean look, count it. We're tied at 99. We got quite the game unfolding here. Boyd tries again. Same spot as last time. And it rattles out here as well. Really good defense here by Cecil Andrews. Not letting Graves get the feed from Morantz. The jump shot is no good. And Boyd has to outstretch his arms over Graves to get the rebound. Wilson Towns, full path ahead. Boyd the assist. We're back in front. Nice pass inside to Mercer. He makes the extra one to Edwards, and we're tied again. Boyd sees a lane and absolutely murders Graves! He just got put in one! 28 points for Boyd. He matches John Morant's poster from earlier, and now he gets a steal. Up to Jonathan Kuminga. He's stripped! Out of bounds, off of him, Memphis gets it back. What a sequence. Wow. Well, this is pretty damn fun. Mercer inside, and he's fouled by Boyd, his fourth. This Mercer guy is making things happen. Off the bench, I think he's off the bench. Not sure if he's starting or not, but he's got over 20 points. Four for six from downtown and making plays everywhere on the courts. But tied again at 103. Boy, the handoff. He steps right into an open three, and this time it's in there. Baseline drive. Ray Morgan picks up the first foul on Jalen Dern here in this one. Only four points for Morgan. This guy is definitely a starter, I'm pretty sure. I say definitely and then pretty sure. I'm actually actually not sure if he is or not. But the free throw is in there. He splits them. 106, 104, under six to play. Dominga lets it fly, but can't sink it. Grant pulls down the board. Up to Morgan. Going right at Boyd, but he can't lay it in. Rogers got the rebound, but he missed it too. He'll still have a third chance. Poor rebounding by the Neptunes will keep it alive for the Grizzlies. We double Morant and Kuminga snatches the lob. The defense in this fourth quarter has been unparalleled. Great pass to the corner. Five point game. Why does Tatum have so much space on the baseline? Kuminga fell asleep. Screen for Hilliard. He launches a three, and this time he finally nails it. A big shot to push our lead to six. Hate him off the screen. A mid-range jumper off the back iron and through. He hasn't touched the ball as much as John Moran, but when he has, he's been very good on these jump shots. 25 points for him. I think Jaws got over 30 now. Jovanovic giving room, and that's a mistake. The handoff, the shot from the elbow, counted for John Morant. Boy trying to control the tempo, he facilitates to Kuminga. That shot's got to go in next time. Uh-oh, this is not a good matchup for us. Tatum at the rim, somehow missed it. Jovanovic has had three different stops on their star players down low. That is not what you would really expect, but Kuminga soars for it! The high-flying finish 
What a pass by Ovi to see that cut. We're back up by six. Memphis uses a timeout with 2.21 to play. Nice pass to the corner, but better defense by the Neptunes. John Morant rises right over DJ to grab the alley-oop. He is just an absolutely just insane athlete. Under two to play, every bucket counts here. Kuminga has a second chance, and it's time he makes it count. It's not over yet, though. Tatum spins, but misses the jumper. Great defensive pickup by Jalen Duran. They lead by seven. One bucket more could end this game. Trying to pull one out here on the road against the top Eastern Conference team. Lloyd with it, trying to milk the clock. He finds Jalen Duran, Mitchell Robinson stepped up too much. And with just under 90 seconds left to play, Memphis might be out of juice here. Tatum pulls up over Kuminga and it toilet bowls in and out. And that might be the game. And the Neptunes are going to steal one on the road at FedEx Forum. A big one against the top conference team. And now we are less than two games back from the one seed, but still a lot of basketball left to play. This was just the first step in getting us towards that goal. Stars a step up late and we outscore the Grizzlies 38 to 25 in the fourth quarter to come back and win. 34 for John Morant, 20 plus for Tatum and Mercer. But Mac Boyd really stepped up. One assist shy of a triple double here in this game. And how about Jonathan Kuminga and Jovanovic hitting a couple of tough shots there in the fourth quarter to put us on top? We had 33 assists in this game. We averaged about 31 per game. We are such a well-rounded offensive team. Just got to figure out how to play a bit better defense. But I think Wilson Towns really showed me something there on defense on John Moran in that game when he was in. And this is what happens. In the second minute of the game, Akbaji tore his left MCL. And we've already been talking about making a move at the two-guard spot. And he was our starter there. He is going to miss like a month and a half, maybe two months. I think in the meantime, I, I do want to give Wendell more the playing time here. And I'm doing this because when we've seen him play both against us and for us, his defense both outside and especially in the, in the low post has been very impressive. He can give us some good minutes as a defensive starter and some good offense too. Like he was off the bench, then we are, are, are going to be all the better for it. Now we got to give these small four minutes off the bench, probably to Josh Green for the most part. And then we'll give more to Hilliard once we're done doing that. So this will leave Quinn Hilliard with 21 minutes off the bench, 22 for Towns, 21 for Josh Green, and 24 as a starter for, for Wendell Moore until we make that trade deadline acquisition. We get a big 15-point win here against Brooklyn, and now that will take us into this nationally televised game against the Celtics. And right now, we're still in fourth now, three games back from Detroit, who has jumped in front once again in the conference. The Grizzlies and Cavaliers are both two games back. The Celtics are now a game and a half back from us in the five spots. But still, only five and a half games separate the one and the eight seeds right now. It's still incredibly close. And that will take us into Atlanta Arena for this game. But like our last one, I'm going to simcast at least the first quarter and see where things lie after that. Looks like the Celtics get off to a pretty good start offensively. We've allowed 33 points here in the first quarter. We jump out in front thanks to a strong second quarter run. 
And now we've got a back and forth game approaching halftime. And the Celtics lead by one. The third quarter starts now. Another close game on our hands. Let's keep it going. Don't forget, this Celtics team has two former Spurs players from last year. Blocked by Jalen Duran. Kaminga brings it up, going right after Posey, the hoop and the harm. He's known for his defense. Well, that time, Kaminga made him pay. The free throw is good. The Neptunes jump in front. Closely guarded, top of the key. Young whips it back to Posey for a clean look, and they're back in front. Nice hop step. Jovanovic deflected at the rim by Posey. But we keep it. Shot clock does not reset. Kaminga lets it fly off the mark. Oh, he almost stole it, but Powell got a clean look instead. And the lead is pushed to three. Boyd with it, and he lost the handle. Posey poked it out. That's already our 11th turnover here in this game. And they're going to give it right back. Jalen Brown steps out. Good look at a three offline from Jovanovic. He's only two for six. Kaminga's two for six from the field. Wonder who besides Boyd, if he's been doing the damage, who else has been involved here? Maybe Wendell Moore's been doing some stuff. Not really sure, but a star-on-star -star matchup right here. And it's, blo <laughs> it's blocked out of bounds by Boyd. He was just waiting for Young to go up with that one. Not easy when you're that small. 3.5 on the clock for Boston. Edric Powell, the inbound man. And he's going to go to Trey Young. Put a hand up, Jovanovic. It's no good. Trey Young is 6 for 20 in this game. Jalen Dern missed the layup, but cleans it up and keeps it alive. Another three from Jovanovic. In and out. Brown. No good. It's tipped to Jovanovic. Still a three-point game. We have a mismatch right here. Lively guarding DJ. That means they got young on Jalen Duran. Don't let help come. Go right after him. Right to the rim. Yeah, just jam it all over him. Lively has a path, but Jalen Duran blocks the jump shot and Boyd gets the rebound. The defense has been very impressive these last couple of episodes with those steals and blocks. And look at that defense to offense. No complaints here. Two point lead for Virginia Beach. Brown lobs it back door, but Durant's there. He read that perfectly. Boyd has one guy to beat, and Trey Young somehow stopped him. Are you serious? Boyd is one for eight, so literally nobody that you typically see play well is playing well. Who is doing all the damage for us offensively? Boyd's only got three points. Brown this time connects in the mid-range. I've never seen anything quite like this, folks. We have nobody with double-digit points. Yovi and Josh Green both have nine. Berea has eight. Kaminga, seven. What is going on here? Boyd, one for eight from the field. One for five from downtown. But six assists. Got to get these guys going here. That's a good pass to Yovi. We'll have a chance at the line to put us back on top. Five for six at the line tonight so far. And in this stance, two for two. Screen from Derek Lively. The shot from Jalen Brown rattles out. I want to put them in front. Boyd brings it up. He's got a mismatch. We're not going to attack it, though. Boyd, blocked by Lively. That's a great switch and a great play in the post. Brown brings it up. Blocked again, Jalen Durant's got three here in the quarter. 
Wendell Morton will lead the fast break. Jovanovic to his right for the trifecta. Five point lead for the Neptunes. Another screen set up. Lively gets the feed. Good kick out to Young, and he's not going to miss the open one. Wendell Moore, extra pass to Boyd. Got it behind the arc. He just doubled his point total. Both offenses are starting to catch some fire here in the middle of the third. No good from Young, but Lively tips it to himself and misses the putback. Really good post defense by Jonathan Kuminga. Shot clock counting down. Got to create something here. Boyd going right at Posey. Left it shorts. Why is Lively taking that one? It hits the rim twice, but does not drop in. Boyd slices to the defense. Leaves it for Kuminga. And now Jovanovic. What? I... Shoot that! I'm so confused why I did not pull the trigger there. The shot clock's counting down. And Boyd's just going to have to jack it up. We could have had a really good shot there and did not take advantage. Poked out and Kaminga got it while Brown wasn't looking. He's got a full path ahead. That was the strangest shot that you could have taken. But it still goes in. Seven point lead. Screen from Lively. Gets a switch for Trey Young. There's a mismatch down low. They go right to it. Timeout Neptunes. Alright, so all the backups just came in at the exact same time. Can they keep it going for us? No good from Josh Green. Good defense there by Vaughn. Up to Brown. Bucket and foul. You can't be doing that. Just let him dunk it in if he's in front of you, man. The crucial three-point play. And now they can make it a two-point game with the free throw. Hilliard can't sink the triple, and now Boston has a chance to tie or take the lead on this possession. Vaughn giving room, but I guess not enough. Bounce, waiting for a screen. Pick and roll, Barea spinning jam. Brown lets it fly, it rattles out, but another offensive rebound for Boston. Berea the screen, Towns the open mid-range jumper, no good, but Berea answers with an offensive board of his own. Great work. 12 points for him, he's been one of our best players on offense in this game, which is not very common for us. He is shooting 75% though, which uh, is very impressive. Up and over Hilliard. No good from Jalen Brown. Josh Green leads the charge right to the ram over. A tough, tall defender. What a finish. Feed inside and Town strips Vaughn for another turnover. We saw it last game and he gives it right back. How many times do we do that? Vaughn, too much off the window. And a mismatch with our bigs and our point guard. Towns the three, in and out. And are 90 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Quick pull up for Brown. That one also misses. Josh Green to Towns. At the rim, another miss. In the paint. And poked out. Andrews trying to track it down. He can't get there in time. But what a great hustle play by the rookie. Going to bring Boyd back in. They're running a couple of players as well. They got six to get off a shot. No way they make a shot here, right? Towns picks up Lowry from the logo. That one almost went. How do they get the rebound? It's rejected out of bounds. It'll stay with Boston. Now it's 12 on the clock. Boyd a bucket saving block right there, but Kuminga, I don't know how you allow that from Jalen Brown, man. Cannot happen next time. Riley, wow. That is like the last thing you can do here in this stage in the game. 
too many second chance points for Boston right now. Luckily, their free throw is off. Boyd gets the feed up and over Brown. And it's off the mark. Gotta get a stop here to close this quarter strong. Christie sets the pick. Vaughn gets down low. Picked up by Hilliard. Back out to Christie. Brown has to fire. That one's no good. Really good hounding defense by the Neptunes right there. No open looks allowed. Towns up and over Lowry. He's got it. Lead back to six. Entering the fourth quarter here at home. 78-72. One quarter left to play. Got to come out on top in another tough game, but we start with a turnover. The Spiper here being wide open at the rim. Lowry on the other end. Won't make us pay, but another offensive rebound allowed. Can we get a stop and prevent second chance points? And the paints. Lowry's floater rims out. Andrews with the shot contest. And impressed by his defense as well as Towns. There's a mismatch down low for the rookie as well. Gulp over Trey Young. Right at the rim. You gotta finish it, and he does. Eyeball screen from Riley. Bowery back to him. And he's fouled in the paints. Got a couple of tough games coming up for Boston. Four straight games, not including this one against teams over 500. Free throw up and good from Riley. Every free throw counts here in the fourth quarter. We talk about this almost every episode. He goes one for two. How many offensive rebounds are we going to allow in this game? This is honestly crazy. Most I've ever seen us allow in a game, maybe ever. Minga sees a lane. Right at Christie. Almost got the buckets. Free throws coming up. And Kaminga knocked down both. First one's in there. He's not... Made a three-pointer here in this game. 0 for 4 from downtown. And he splits the free throws just like they did. Another screen for Lowry. Up and over. Kuminga, the jumper, counts. I'm all screen from Andrews. Kuminga over the top. That was deflected by Riley. Lowry on the other end. Up and over Towns. Got it again. Two-point ball game. He just ripped it right from Andrews. What was that turnover, man? We gotta get a stop here and get a bucket on the offensive end. Trey Young almost had the open look. It's Vaughn instead, and the Celtics are in front. They start this quarter just like we did against the Grizzlies, and now we're losing. The last thing you'll want to see is start the quarter. And we give it right back. What are we doing right now? Vaughn brings it up and misses the layup, but another offensive rebound. What is happening? Vaughn. I'm going to lose it. We just do something positive here in the fourth quarter. There's Wilson Towns with the mid-range jumper. They've taken 13 more shots than we have. We have got a rebound. What was that lob? Are you kidding? We can't get a stop to save our lives. Need this one to drop. Kaminga misses the open tray ball. Come on, man. Christy the screen. Lowry the triple. We, we got to call timeout. We got to call timeout. This has got to stop. They're killing us right now. They've outscored us by 13 points already, so in come the starters to help us out. Can they make the most of playing against their mostly bench team? We just gave it right back to them again. This is just ugly right now. What a horrible fourth quarter performance so far. Still plenty of time left, but 
I mean, this is just getting worse as the game goes on. Young working on Jovanovic. Help comes. The shot rims out. Got to attack this fast break. Moore brings it up and almost turned it over. Boyd shows off the range. Welcome back in the game. Trey Young is wide open. What was that play? Nice kick out. Kuminga could have pulled the trigger there. Instead, he misses the layup, but Jalen Duran keeps things alive again. You can't rely on the offense rebounds to put the bucket in the hoop. Wendell Moore over Young. Got it! Big three. One score game. Off the screen. Young. Darn loose by Kuminga. Pass it up ahead. Do not screw this up. Right to the rack. One point game. Lively pulls up off the inbound pass. What? You guys know how many times we have seen this guy take a three. That was his first make. Boy, he jams it all over Trey Young. But we're still down. I can't believe he just made that, that, that trifecta. If he's going to make those shots, we're not going to win. Christie lays it in right at the hoop. That was actually Powell, not Christie. They made 40 shots out of their 84. Jovanovic steps back, goes right back down the lane, and picks up the second foul against Derek Lively. Got to knock down both free throws. And he, of course, misses the first one. Oh, man. I think Boyd is, like, the only guy on this team that you can pretty much guarantee to go two for two, except, like, 2% of the time. Another little pick and roll. Powell had some room. But we recover on defense. They love these screens for Young. The three won't drop in. Here's our chance to tie things up. Moore finds Boyd. Open mid-range. Jumper. Gotta have it. Under four minutes to go. Lively sets the screen. Jovanovic gets around it. And Trey Young is denied at the rim by Mac Boyd. A bucket will put us in front here. Got to make it count. They got Young on Kuminga, or Young on Boyd, and Kuminga turns it over. I'm going to be sick. We're just giving Boston a chance after chance. The turnovers, the offensive rebounds. The Stars not playing too well in the first half. They all got to step up here in this fourth quarter if we want a chance to win this game. Powell lets it fly but can't connect. A big stop right there. Now got to score on this end. Only take smart shots, please. Boyd gets by Posey and hits it from the elbow. The Neptunes lead 98-97. 12 second half points by Boyd after a 1-for-8 first half. Will it be enough to come out on top? Ozzy with a fake screen. Lively gets the feed. Duran is called for a shooting foul. And we had a block on that play from Kuminga. Luckily, the first one rims out. Lively splits the free throws. Brand new ball game. Pretty much a two minute 30 second game right here. And we start with the ball. Minga off the screen, back to Jalen Duran, work to perfection on the pick and roll. Just no threes allowed, please. Powell with the fadeaway, what a shot! That was incredible. Boyd going right at Posey! Are you kidding me, Boyd? He just put him six feet under to the center of the earth. Oh my Christ. I got to watch that again. That was amazing. Second time in the episode. Posey does not want to face 22, man. 
He's seen enough. He saw enough in last year's finals. And oh my god. The second murder of the episode. Is it going to be enough to win? I already asked that earlier. Two point game. Just over 90 seconds to go. That's a good pump fake by Brown. The jumper and the paint is off the mark. That is such a huge miss. Jovanovic can't connect on the three. The door is still open for Boston. No threes allowed. The lob is swatted away. Jonathan Kaminga with a skyward deflection. Absolutely huge defensive play. Now can we put the ball in the hoop? Wendell Moore can't connect. Oh, man. That's two good looks back to back. Young. Blocked out of bounds. No coming and got the rebound. Huge crunch time defense. Boy, top of the key. Good night, Celtics. 22. What a fourth quarter. This is awesome. You've had a couple of fantastic finishes here today already. But it's not over yet. It's 43 on the clock. If they go fast and score fast, it's not over. Brown. Oh, they're going to call Window more for a foul. What a call by the refs. Galen Brown just got his 10th point off the free throw. Four for 14 from the field. Him and Trae Young have both struggled shooting-wise. But, oh, he goes one for two. And it's still a four-point game. They're forced to foul. I can't believe he just missed that. 36 on the clock. They're going to have to foul again. And it's going to be free throws for Boyd to put this game away. I mean, who else after those last two plays, man, on the offensive end? First free throw drops in. And Boyd, as I said earlier, almost always goes two for two. What more can you ask of him here in this second half after a really poor start? Brown going right to the rim, and the layup's in there to put it back to four. Trying to go for... A last-minute miracle. Ivanovic this time will have the free throws. And if he makes these, the game is probably over. First one is off. Brother, please. I'm just asking for two free throw shots to go in. The five-point game, they will burn their last timeouts. Under 20 seconds left to go. Brown has it. Lost his dribble. Trey Young lets it fly and misses the three. Boyd pulls down the rebound. Posey will foul. And now, free throws to really end it for Mac Boyd. The first one is up and good. The bench is on their feet. The crowd's on their feet. Boyd, two for two. Perfect at the line. And that's going to be enough to get the win. Mac Boy with some huge crunch time plays. And we win it here at home. 110 to 103. One step closer to moving up in the conference standings. It's close wins like this that are going to get you to where, where you want to be. You got to win these kinds of games throughout the entire season. And we did so here and in Memphis. It ends up being a 21 point second half from Mac Boyd, finishing 8 for 19 from the field. But really, in total, both teams kind of struggled from the field. I guess in total, we shot 50%, they shot 45%, which I guess is pretty average. But our stars just were not shooting very well. Jovanovic, 3 for 9, Kaminga, 4 for 10. Olsen Towns off the bench. 
Only hit four shots. And their stars also kind of struggled. Eight for 29 for Trey Young. A day to forget for him. Brown ends up five for 15. And uh, our role player stepped up. And our main star stepped up there in the fourth quarter. And uh, we come out on top. Now we're rocking a three game win streak. And I think my plan is to end the episode right at the trade deadline. We're going to see where things are at. We'll probably discuss where teams are at right now across the league. And we'll discuss what to do heading into next episode, but might not make a move until the start of the next one. We got the all-star draft today, and it's going to be Team John Morant and Team Victor Wembanyama. The second street year without a team for Mac Boyd. But he is at the top of the line in uh, the uh, draft. And he is selected to join Victor Wembanyama's team. So it's him, Boyd, SGA, LaMelo, and Tatum. What a squad that is. With uh, Mobley, Zion, Jabari Smith Jr., Garland, AC Cole, Triang, and Cousins off the bench. And they're going to be facing John Morant, Cade Cunningham, Giannis, Nikola Jokic, and Glenn Carroll. Very tall lineup over there with um, both of uh, the former Nugget centers. And it looks like Billy Willis has made his first All-Star appearance. And I believe his second season. And uh, for us, Kaminga does not make it this time. Jovanovic has never made the All-Star game. Only one for the Neptunes, which is usually the case. It'll take us into a stretch where we have one more home game, but then five on the road entering the All-Star break. I forget if the deadline comes a week before or a week after the deadline. I think it's a week before, but let's find out. It is a week before, so we are going to stop simming right here before this heat game on the 5th of February. We have a five-game win streak, and we are second in the conference now. Same record as the Cavaliers with a tiebreaker over them right now, but the Pistons have a pretty substantial lead right now with just over a month and a half to go on the season. These are the stats as of right now. We're still getting pretty similar production throughout the year. Um, Yobi's going down because he's playing less minutes as of late because of the fatigue. And it looks like Boyd is still rested. Kaminga is also as well. Most guys are fresh. Gil Endurance no longer fatigued. But I think low-key starting... Wendell Moore over Agbaji has been kind of a good thing for us. We have not lost a game since putting Moore into our starting lineup, but I think it's because he's just that good of a defender. If we compare him to Agbaji, which actually we can't do because he's hurt, but if we look at Moore, first of all, he's very happy to be a starter, which is great, but also his ability on the defensive side, I think, stands out. He's got A outside defense, B plus post defense, and that is pretty big for a 6'5 guy that can stop somebody who likes to get to the rim. And if you look at his attributes, 72 inside defense is better than the average at this position, and the outside defense is higher as well. 82 stealing, 70 blocking, 74 lateral quickness, 83 health defense, 85 pass perception. These are all things that I like about him. So I think I feel comfortable moving forward with Wendell Moore as the starting two guard. But if we do want to make a move, there are probably going to be some options. And according to the Team Intel page, the Pistons are going to target Keon Malone and Donnell Burke. So I want to make a move for one of those guys at the deadline, especially at power forward, because they're currently starting Brian Sutton there. But he is only a 77 overall. He's only 22 years old. He's probably better fit to come off the bench, and that could be a good move for them to make, and I guess they're still missing Anderson. He got hurt again. He has dislocated his right patella. Apparently done for the year. Wow, he has had some really crappy injury, like, but they're still winning games without him, I guess. When was the last time he played? His last game was December 26th, and we are... All the way through January now. So he has not played in quite some time. And they're still top of the conference without him. These Pistons, 
I think they do need to make a move at the deadline uh, to make up for losing their star player because that would really help them out. Outside of them, the Raptors are looking at still a center between Jerome Lynch and Darius Higgins. But again, we thought about doing this earlier, but they just don't have the cap room. The Rockets still have plenty of cap room. They could go after a guy like Murray Bailey or somebody else. So there are definitely some options. The Spurs are looking pretty damn good. I'm not going to make a move for them, I don't think. I think I made enough for them uh, to start the season. And their starting five looks pretty damn good. They're first in the conference for a reason. All right, so I'm going to go to the player finder, and we're going to look up B or better outside defense, C plus or better post defense, B or better physicals, and C plus or better basketball IQ. And there's 13 options here at the two guard spot. And uh, a lot of stars here, but you've also got guys like Fred Jamison, Adrian Morrison, who signed with the Breeze in the offseason, Eamon Thompson, who the Spurs acquired via trade. There is Christian Tatum from the Pelicans, who are well below 500, way worse than I thought they would be. They're 18 and 33 right now, and they are selling. And he's not much of a score out of U of R. And. He's got challenger, clamps, glove, all really good defensive ones, interceptor, pick dodger. I already like this guy. You want to make a move for a guy that can really give you the defense that you're looking for to lock some people down. And it could also be kind of a high flyer and make some big athletic plays. Tatum might be the guy to go after. It was a first round pick back in 2027. We're now in 2032. He's not shooting incredibly well, but we're not looking for a shooter really right now at the two-guard spot. He would only be playing about what he's playing right now, like 24 points a game. So that is definitely a solid option for us. There's also Timmy Gill with the Sixers. And they've kind of dropped off the map after a really good start initially. Another guy out of uh, our state of Virginia, VCU this time, Timmy Gill, same city as... Tatum went to school. There's also Antoine Towns, who looks eerily similar to our backup point guard. But outside of those two guys, that's probably uh, your best option. How about this guy? A flashback to Steve Ray. He has not played in the NBA since we let him go. I think that was a smart move on our part, but he's still available as a free agent. All these years later, what a what a flashback this guy is. Been a while. Well, think about a move at center for the Raptors, but again, not sure if we can actually make one happen with their cap situation. The Rockets could use a power forward. We'll think about that going into the next episode. And what team could use a point guard? I think maybe the Sonics could. It says they're rebuilding, but they're fourth in their conference. A really good record. If they get a better point guard out there, then maybe they get over the hump. I think we're going to make a move with them potentially, or for them. Otherwise, I think Minnesota's probably fine. They have a young player point guard. I think it makes sense to let them ride that out and see where that goes. All right, this is pretty much the only deal that is going to be valid for both teams. I have not even tried to see if this will actually work. But trying to ship off Scoot Henderson and three other players to the Sonics. They're, they're going to lose some depth, but they have a lot of depth over in um, Seattle. Plus these four guys all coming off the bench right now. They still have plenty of other young players that will get playing time. Like Gerard Romero, Jonathan Mayo, Matthew Wilcox, Kenneth Graves. All these guys. They've even got Pascal Siakam and Grant Williams stashed on their bench. And those guys should get some playing time. So I'm curious if they'll take this deal. This will send Scoot Henderson to Seattle to join Chuck Early, Delano Collins, and Timmy Hayes. And the deal... I guess they don't have any interest. What? Anthony Black is on an expiring contract. And he's not untouchable. So I think... You might trade away Anthony Black to the Sonics instead. It's hard to find the right place. Maybe the Nets, but their cap space is not looking too great for a big trade like that. 
There's just not many teams that could acquire him. Maybe the Pistons should. And then if Anderson comes back, they have two really good guards. Let's go see if that's going to get done. All right, I have concocted another trade. The Pistons trying to acquire another star to keep their one seed hopes alive after losing their best player. They're going to ship off. They're going to try to ship off Killian Hayes, Harvey Sharp, Herb Jones, and a first round pick they have from Milwaukee this year to acquire Scoot Henderson, Delano Chase, and Alan Sims. And the Pistons like what they have. Are we talking about the same Scoot Henderson here? The guy that's a 91 overall dropping over like 25 points a game? He's dropping 27 points a game. They really don't want this. What, what if I get rid of the first round pick? What if I just do this? A three player swap. And now they don't have any interest at all. Are we serious here? You know what? Houston, or not Houston, Phoenix here. They have a lot of cap space. They're only 20 and 25. If they were to acquire Henderson, they're already looking at a point guard over in um, New Orleans. So that could be a move. Or they could get Anthony Black. Or they could get Scoot Henderson. And then they could be a really good contender over in the Western Conference. I'm going to try to ship Anthony Black off to Seattle right now, though, because they are targeting him. All right, the song's going to try and ship off Lee Solomon plus Devin Vassell and a lottery-protected first-round pick this year to Utah to acquire Anthony Black and Omar Akiel to even out the rosters. And what do they make of this trade? There's a counteroffer from the Sonics. They want to include Grant Williams and make it a pick swap and include Chad Whites. And that's going to be enough to get this deal done. Anthony Black is joining the Seattle Sonics. The biggest move of the deadline so far. So that lineup right now with Anthony Black in there looks pretty nasty now. They should be a fun team to face. The Suns have no interest. Does anybody want to acquire Scoot? This is crazy. I've tried three different teams that need, need a point guard. And they have no interest. This is just insane. What if um, we take off one of the first round picks? Then what? They agree it's finally done. The Phoenix Suns, in a shocking move, have acquired Scoot Henderson. The biggest move, the biggest trade, maybe, of the entire series. It was Scoot Henderson, Henry Ramsey, for Stevie Richardson, Tari Eason, and a 2032 first round pick unprotected. That's what it takes. Two big moves to acquire point guards by Seattle and by Phoenix over in the Western Conference. I think we're going to end it right here. And we're not done at the deadline, though. We still have moves to think about for us and moves for some other teams. But now, the Suns lineup looks like this. Scoot Henderson, Rocco Loeb, they kind of messed up a couple of other positions. But a big move by them. And that should be enough to maybe make them an uh, actual playoff team down the stretch. A big move here at the deadline. But he had to get out of Portland. They have never been good. And so here we are. At the deadline, 32 and 19. Still more moves to make. And I'm still thinking about going after Christian Tatum. But I'm going to let you guys leave some feedback down below on what you guys want to see us make a move or what kind of moves you, you, you want to see us make here at the deadline and what you want to see other teams do that we've already kind of talked about through the course of going through the team intel. But two big trades right there, and that is how we're going to end it right now. So, about a quarter of the season left. We're going to end this season next episode out of the deadline and the all-star break. I will see you guys there. Please like, subscribe, and as always, please leave your feedback and comments down below on any other moves you want to see made here in this franchise. And uh, we'll see if we can get those done. 
I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.